All right, guys, I've got a 10 minute unrated game against an opponent with a rating 817. So they've played the King's Pawn out. I'm going to play the Piotr's defense. Why not? It's only a 10 minute game, so I can't talk too much. I'm wanting to uh, get into some really deep explanations of openings. Okay, now I can play e5. Let's play the knight out here. So he's defending that pawn. I'm attacking it once. Okay, this is that looks natural. If I capture with my pawn, he's going to have to recapture with a piece. Most likely the knight. Um, if he captures me, I can recapture with the pawn, but... Uh, Let's see. Let's see what he does. I'm going to develop the knight. He might kick me and gain a tempo. But if he captures... Okay. Okay, that's fine. So he's kicked. And let's stick the knight here. Slightly precarious. Could get attacked again. This is not an opening that I normally play. Okay. And now I have to come back here. Now he has the option to swap off his bishop. But, I would argue maybe the bishop is a better piece or a more important piece than the knight, so fair enough. Okay, so game on. Nine minutes left. Thinking of maybe pinning the knight. My bishop is quite mobile now. My opponent <coughs> no longer has a light square bishop. Now this is... <clears throat> prophylactic move, it's a preventative move, so he's stopping me from playing either my knight or my bishop to g4. But it may come back to bite him at some point in time, because this pawn is now a target. It's one of the pawns that's likely to be around his king. Okay, so he's come out with another pin. Um, I think I can just safely castle here. If he wants to swap off his other bishop, then he's free to do that. But I'm going to try and keep these bishops here. I think it was Tarash who said that you should keep your, your bishops, all three bishops in front of your king, and this knight if possible, um, unless you are forced to do otherwise. Okay, that's a weird move. That's a weird one. So, my opponent needs to be thinking about castling his king, but where's he going to do it? I mean, right now I've got knight takes, pawn takes, and bishop takes. Well, not there, but here, right? That would then pin this knight, wreck his kingside pawns. Um, this is defended once. I think I'm kind of inclined to... I want to push pawns up now on the queen side, or in the centre. I'm just going to develop my bishop here. And I might play, not I think about c5, and if he captures on Passant, recapture with the bishop. But these pawns are starting to look very staggered right now. And he's made another pawn move, but he's undefended this pawn in the process. So I'm just going to grab that. Now we have tension between the bishops here. So eight minutes on the clock. Hanging pawns is unnecessary, really. That was completely unforced. Okay, and now out comes the queen. So I think he's, he's now suddenly he's going, oh no, I'd better get my king to safety. Um, hmm. Now it's a question of what's best. Don't really want to swap off bishops and move this pawn. It just unleashes this rook. There's no real reason to do that. Um, I could push f6, but that is moving one of my king's bodyguard pawns. However, it does come with tempo. It forces the bishop back to one of these squares, which I think is only better for me. But let's just proceed with this idea. I think this looks good. c6, attacking in the centre. He's kind of attacked down one wing. 
So very often it's a good idea then to respond by attacking in the center of the board. Okay, pawn is defended twice and that's the discovered attack on the knight. Right, so let's bring the knight back here. The second attacker on this pawn. It's defended actually three times. Hmm, that pawn's defended twice. But I can now maybe think about h6 being an idea. h6, try and kick the bishop, but also I'm preventing this move. But if he plays that, I've just got g6. And I think that's actually stronger. I think that's okay. So, with that in mind, maybe queen b6 looking at this pawn. I think that's all right. Two attackers on here, three defenders. No defenders on the b2 pawn. I have mobile rooks, my rooks are connected. I've now completed development. My opponent has not completed development and he's just reacted with a yet another pawn move. This knight's effectively pinned because the bishop behind it is undefended right now. So maybe I should just casually centralize my rooks. Okay, that's defended by the queen. Not sure on the point of that rook move though. So now we can't castle kingside because the rook's moved. So he can only castle long. Um, but he's already really messed up his pawns. He's got no d pawn. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Think simply centralize the other rook. This is the cherry on the cake of development. Hmm, that's not bad. <clears throat> now, like I said, I, I do have g6. If pawn takes, take the other pawn. So he is threatening check. This pawn's a long way away. Okay, I'm going to capture the f-pawn. Still three defenders on there. Rook is actually undefended, interestingly. So this pawn can't move. So he's got to be careful there. Okay, what's his plan? I don't know, but he's looking at my queen. If he takes my queen, I undouble my pawns, which is fine for me. Um, I could push a pawn up. It's attacked twice, defended three times. I think it makes sense to strike in the center because the king is uncastled and the queen's in the center. And I've got peace dominance there, right? So he's got knight and a pawn looking at that but i've got three defenders one two three okay looks like my opponent's disconnected here so i'm currently learning these these principles there are loads and loads of principles in chess all of which can be bent or broken um but i've got um, i'm working through a new book called uh, logical chess i think Every move explained. Okay, he's going to auto resign in 10 seconds, apparently. I think we've got a decent position here. It's still worth having a look and analyzing and see what the, the engine thinks were good moves and maybe not so good moves. Okay, so I've won through abandonment. Okay, so let's have a look at the game report. So I think bringing my knight out, getting my knight kicked around, I don't think it's going to like that. But otherwise, I think we've done all right. Okay, so it's it's got black doing better here. Okay, but my opponent played accurately as well with one blunder. Okay, so let's look, go through move by move. Four knights game scotch variation. Hmm. Okay. So he's now ahead in development. He's developed two pieces to my one now. Okay, now we have the four knights. Okay, and this is the scotch move. This d4 is the scotch move. Okay, and that's excellent. <clears> Our <throat> oh, best, yeah. 
kicking the knight. And it says I should have brought my knight back. Okay, that would have blocked in this bishop, but it did allow this, which is best again. So he's up a pawn now, equivalent. And bishop takes and doubling the pawns. Yeah, so this is what we expected. It's saying that here white is doing better, which is fine. The point of my videos is not just to annihilate every opponent, it's to learn lessons. So, okay, bishop e7 is best, preparing to castle, developing a piece. Um, okay, excellent move. And castling is best. This is, this is good, this is good play all round. Uh, okay, rook to b8, it was saying was a good move, looking at this pawn here. And it didn't like that one, said a mistake, so now suddenly it's got um, black 1.4 points in front. And why? Well, for one thing, it's undefended this pawn. Okay, because knight takes g4 is the best move, and now I'm in the lead. Okay, and you can see there's a typical pattern here, a very common pattern. Look at all the pawn moves that my opponent has played. Okay, this one's even disappeared. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six pawn moves have been played by black. I've done a capture and two pawn moves. Okay, and this is the weakness. This is the big weakness. And so if you're sub 1000, you've got to treat pawn moves with a great deal of respect. Okay, it didn't like this. Should have pushed h6 and kicked the bishop away. Okay. Now has this equal. Takes. Takes is best. So we've just played the best two moves and it's gone from equal to now I'm nearly a, a point better. Okay. Knight coming back is good. Knight to here it doesn't like. It says I should have pushed with the pawn. Okay. Yeah, there's an argument for that. Um, didn't like that at all. Okay. Queen to here, a mistake. Knight takes e4. There you go. There's some computer logic for you. Knight takes e4 is best, okay? So this is a piece that's got three defenders. Knight takes e4, I should have played. Wow. Okay, knight takes e4, really? Okay, well, it, I mean, it frees up this, this pawn in front of my rook. It's saying that knight d takes e4, would have happened, and bishop. And then we swap off bishops here. Hmm, okay. Interesting one. But if you look at the board now, it, it is really opened up, isn't it? And this king is starting to look very bad. Look at where the, what the remaining pawns are, okay? So although at this point I could be a piece down. No, it's got white much better now. It's got white much better. Let's go back a few moves. Okay, so I shouldn't have captured with the bishop there. Okay, so here, at this point, after knight takes, black is 1.5 up. And it's saying bishop takes g5. Ah, okay, right. There we go. And we win the bishop. Right, let's figure that out. That's interesting. Okay, so after that pawn push, and this is why it's a it's a, an error, right? Then it's saying I can capture there with a discovered attack on the bishop. Okay, now it's really worth doing this analysis in in your own games. Okay, and don't just settle for a, the computer said that was better, but I can't figure out why. Okay, this is why knight takes freed piece. So I've actually won a pawn in that in all of that exchange. Okay, so here I'm plus one in terms of material. Okay, um, here I'm now plus two. I'm a whole pawn up. Okay, and if knight takes and queen takes, we've got a far, far better position. Ah, bishop takes h1 is best. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I didn't even, I didn't factor that one in. The knight's pinned as well. So I can take that almost for free. Knight takes, boom. And totally winning. Very, very interesting. Every game is a lesson. Every game is an opportunity to learn. I've learned from doing this analysis, even though it was an incomplete game, even though my player is 600 and 
600 points lower rated doesn't matter. Every game is a lesson. Um, and bottom line, you know, if I saw a quote the other day, I think it was on the chess.com Facebook group saying, um, if you just hit um, new game at the end of every game, you know, you will not improve as much as if you um, analyze your every game, you know, hit analysis. When you finish a game, hit analysis. It's an opportunity to get better. Simple as that, okay. So, uh, quite enjoyable, uh, quite uh, instructive. Um, and it's pointing out to me maybe my blind spots, right? I was, I was looking at this, I never saw this. Never saw this idea at all, okay? So right now, I mean, I saw some pins, but I missed, in the game, I missed this one. This pawn is pinned. And as soon as he played that, I could have just grabbed the pawn and got myself a free bishop, or at least a free pawn at the, the very least. Yeah, with his king still in the middle of the board. So, one to remember for me. Okay, and uh, hope it's been useful for you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I shall see you soon.